Hey there. So originally in this video, I was going to do a little bit of look dev. I was going to start dragging and dropping these materials onto the la layer stack on for the individual UDMs for all these different uh, UDMs, right? And find the look of this asset by changing, by adapting some of the materials and changing the colors and things like that. But then if I was going to be applying the materials and smart materials, I thought maybe it would be more beneficial to the user to actually learn what the differences between them are, right? For example, which materials need additional maps, which ones don't. Um, and how the smart materials are actually structured. So once you have this information, you'll be better able to manage your asset size, for example, um, especially ones with this many UDMs. So let's get onto it. At the very core of it, materials, what they are is just substance designer files. Some of them utilize noises and procedural uh, layers, and some of them utilize photographs. But those are on the material side of things, right? So they, they are, uh, stored within the actual material outside of this main model file, okay? Uh, on the other hand, whenever you uh, bake any kind of additional maps or anytime you paint a custom layer, that information will then be stored into this model paint file, okay? So that is when the file size actually will, will increase. So if I go into the materials and just select the aluminum and then drag and drop it here, You'll notice that the model, I mean, the material has been applied, the model has been colorized. And then if you go into the properties menu and expand all these, uh, there are no uh, inputs for image maps. And this is nice because it allows you to keep things nice and efficient and uh, just to the point. So there's no dependency on these uh, additional maps. On the other hand, if you were to say and use the caterpillar metal, the orange one here, and drag and drop it on top of the stack, inside the layer menu. Uh, well, first of all, it looks orange here, but it's kind of rusty uh, over here. And that's because if you, again, go into the properties menu, there are image inputs. There's occlusion, curvature, and position. So what this represents is that this material, the caterpillar metal, requires additional maps. So once you bake or process these additional maps, then they get input into the image inputs uh, automatically. So let me bake those out right now. So bake, I usually like to just select none to start. And so I need the occlusion, so ambient occlusion. Then I need the curvature, so let me click that. And then I also need the position, so let me click that as well. I'm just going to leave all the other settings uh, by default and bake the textures for the individual, te uh, uh, you know, for this actual UDEM. I don't want to use bake all textures because again, it's going to take way too long and it's going to increase my file size way more than I need to at this point. So click that and then wait until it's done. And then you'll notice that the material will change look uh, once all these image inputs have been filled in. So as you can see, the metal is now orange. There's some paint on it, right? And also the image inputs have now the ambient occlusion, the curvature and position. So, and as you can see, this looks identical, the curvature and the position. So yeah, so this ma uh, material utilizes that. Let's talk about the smart materials next. So if I were to then go into the smart materials and apply something like the bronze armor and just drag and drop it to the top of the layer stack, uh, the first thing you'll notice is that the properties, all the properties disappear. And if I click on the material, there are in fact properties. So the main difference here is that this bronze armor smart material is actually just a group. This is a representation of a group. So this icon represents what it actually looks like, what the buildup of that material looks like, but the actual contents of it are stored within it. So if I click on this folder and expand it, you'll see all the different layers that make up this smart material. You'll see the fills, you'll see the, any kind of filters, the masks, the mask uh, generators and things like that. So all this within it makes up the final smart material. And generally, there's a higher dependency on additional maps for these materials, right, for them to be rendered. So the file size will, again, increase due to the fact that you're sorting every single pixel for these maps, right, versus just uh, algorithmically uh, or procedurally, rather, uh, shading the models. So that's pretty much the main big difference is that these are uh, made within Painter, the smart materials. So all these layers are made from within Painter, and all these uh, materials here are actual substance files. That's pretty much it.